on Sunday. Um, I had originally thought about maybe trying to do some of this service from outside, but it's still a little bit cool at 11 o'clock in the morning in Great Falls, Montana, so we're still inside. You can see over my left shoulder our palms. We did have our palms delivered to the church earlier in the week. Um, some churches were offering to hand out palms, just people drive by and pick them up. And then the health officials came on and said, mm, probably not a good idea because we don't know really um, how much those um, virus germs could get embedded into those palms and be shared. So I share them with you here. They will show up again in about a year um, as ashes for, for Ash Wednesday. As we begin our time in worship this morning, I invite you to, if you can, um, position yourself or if you can look out a, a window to just kind of take in some of the sights. If you're comfortable enough having the windows open, open up a window so that you can hear the sounds and, and um, experience the smells of creation. Make note of the sky, that wild Montana sky the plants, the trees, the birds or animals. Let yourself settle into this time this morning and then be aware of how you feel both physically and emotionally and spiritually. And let us listen to the first four verses of Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. I invite you to be with me in prayer. Holy One, there is much around us that tells of your glory. Yet it's so easy to let that which is dreadful take over. So readjust our hearts and souls to see the splendor of creation, the joy of the earth around us, the creative ways we are connected to one another, and the never-ending love that abides in all creation. Be with us in spirit and truth as we enter into a time of worship. Amen. And then I'd like to continue um, with reading just a part of the Palm Sunday story out of John's Gospel. It's in John 12, um, verses 12 through 15. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meeting, meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. That's our reading for today. May God's blessing be added to what we have heard. Now, this is not the whole Palm Sunday story. There's, there's more to the story. There's more to the story in scripture, and there's more to the story in history part of the history that didn't make it into the scripture. So if we go back to just what is the rest of the story that is told in scripture, some of the things that we discover is that, is that later on, after Jesus comes into Jerusalem, there's this big confrontation between Jesus and the religious officials who want him to quiet the crowds. It was a dangerous time for Jews to be congregating and holding parades and welcoming perhaps the Messiah in Jerusalem. Such acts could be seen as treasonous 
or as rebellion. What the religious leaders were all about back then was to try to keep the peace between the Jews and Rome, and that peace was centered mostly on just kind of keeping things quiet. Rome had basically told the religious leaders, hey, if you keep your people quiet and, and behaving well, we're not going to come down hard on them. So they were, the religious leaders were all about just trying to keep things quiet and still. But it was Passover. And Passover was a big time for the Jewish people. It still is. It was when people would go to Jerusalem, they would make pilgrimages to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover in and around the temple. And so Rome was a little bit more on edge, more than usual. They knew that it could be a great time for a Jewish uprising. So they would send extra soldiers to Jerusalem to keep an eye on it. So that's the part of the history that is not really told specifically in the, in the Gospels. There would be more military present in Jerusalem. And to remind the people that that was happening, Pilate probably entered into Jerusalem in a parade of his own. He would have come in one of the main gates that led from Jerusalem. He would have been accompanied by, um, by many soldiers. And it was intended to remind the gathering Jewish pilgrims that Rome was still in charge and would be ready to meet them with force if need be. So that's kind of the rest of the big story. I wanted to put that out there, but then I want to back up a little bit and go back to this first part of the story that we heard in our scripture reading from John this morning. This is back when the crowd learns of Jesus and his coming to Jerusalem. And they meet him at the gates with palm branches and cries of Hosanna. This is the part that we like to reenact. Remember, in years past, as we have been celebrating Palm Sunday, we gather in the narthex of the church. Everybody gets a palm. The story is read. The doors to the sanctuary are open wide and we all go in led by the children and the choir and everyone singing something about Hosanna. I miss that this year. I miss the rustling of the palms. I miss the excitement of the children. I miss the unending questions about who goes in and when and how, you know, do the kids go in first or does the choir go in first and, and then when does everybody else go in and and, and then there's the unspoken questions about, is somebody going to sit in my seat before I can get there? It is chaos. Mm -hmm. And I miss that. One colleague put it earlier this week. I miss the schmoosh. She said, this is when we all kind of schmoosh together before we go into the sanctuary. And she says, I miss that. Unfortunately, we've all become so accustomed to social distancing that it's going to take us a while when this is all over to be able to be comfortable in our schmushing. But we'll get there. It may take a while, but we will get there. For today, settling into the triumph part of the story seems important and that's what this is this is the triumph part of the story and i think it's important for us to settle into that part of the story because things don't really feel very triumphant right now every day there are increasing numbers of covid19 cases there are more and more reports of hospitals in major cities that continue to have difficulty getting the necessary equipment and supplies that they need we are now being asked to wear masks and our governor will likely be extending the stay at home order a couple more weeks. It just doesn't feel like there's a lot of triumphant stuff happening right now. It makes going into spring and the holy season of the church a little bit more challenging than usual. But there's hope. 
And I find that hope in the first part of the story of Palm Sunday, this part where people, in spite of the threat from Rome, recognize Jesus and rejoice in his coming. They defy the threats and they greet him in rejoicing. Now, I'm not advocating that we ignore the threat of the coronavirus and defy the safety protocols. I want to reiterate, everybody, stay home, wash your hands, wear a mask. Because what the people in Jerusalem were doing, they were ultimately defying Rome's claim to be sovereign. They were recognizing that Jesus brought the hope that they needed. And he brought it through his radical, inclusive teachings and his actions of inclusivity. He brought it through his sacred gift of healing. He brought it with his passion for the poor and the marginalized and his willingness to reveal the sacred that exists outside of tradition and rituals. And here we are having church outside of the church building. They saw in Jesus one who revealed the holiness of God more than anyone else, and that's who they chose to honor by calling out to him. And they called out to him, Hosanna. Hosanna can mean two things. It's a proclamation of praise. It's like saying, hip, hip, hooray. But it's also a cry to save us. And some biblical scholars have said, hmm, sometimes when the Gospels say save, they're meaning heal. Heal us. Which in a way, when you turn to somebody with a heartfelt plea to heal us, isn't that one of the best praises that you could give someone. Think about what it means to ask Jesus to heal us. What does ask for healing look like in the midst of a pandemic? There's the obvious. You can pray for Jesus and God to bring healing of those who have been infected with the COVID-19 virus. And bring an end to it. We can also be looking at healing in a number of different ways to help us find deep generosity and be released from fear, to help us set aside the business end of health care so the people who are skilled and trained can bring healing to the world, to help us open the way for the help that already exists to get to where it needs to be. Healing from the virus itself is not so far away that it can't happen and can't happen soon. But there's more. With such uncertainty in the world right now, we discover that many of us are carrying around other needs for healing in body and mind and in spirit. Some of those needs we have known about, but they are heightened in this time of uncertainty and stress. And some of those needs are new. We've got time to think about what healing means for us. Sometimes it means a cure. Sometimes it means accepting what doesn't necessarily need or have a cure other than to be considered that it's okay. And it's still part of being a whole person. Whatever healing means for your particular situation, I invite you to take your palm or your piece of paper and write down what it is that healing means for you in your particular situation. I'm going to give you some time to do that. Um, oh yeah, I had a couple of things listed here as some examples. If you miss your family and friends, that's something that could use some healing. Write it down. If you are fearful, write that down. If you are sick and hurting physically, 
write that down. If you are challenged emotionally and spiritually, write that down. So we'll take a few minutes and just go ahead and write those things down on your paper or on your palm. What does it mean for us in this day, in this time, when we aren't smushed together to seek the healing of Christ? That the journey of faith we have traveled to this point has taught us what those early followers of Jesus knew as they greeted him in triumph the early days in Jerusalem. That he carried within him the love of God that has the capacity to bring healing and wholeness in a number of circumstances, in a variety of ways, perhaps in ways that we may not even discern. In times of trial and challenge, we can look back to those who have been through it and learn from them. They made it through it. They made it through it. And they passed along that faith to others who passed along to others and others and others. And that's the faith that we receive this day, in this time of uncertainty. So perhaps today's learning can be from our ancestors in faith who met Jesus at the city gates and had the faith to call out, Hosanna, save us, heal us. along with our own places that are in need of healing that we have written on our palms, I would also invite you to write down, and if you would like to share um, verbally um, or with a comment on Zoom, if you're gonna share verbally on Zoom, don't forget to unmute your, yourself. Um, and if you wanna share something on Facebook, just go ahead and type in that comment. I can see, I'll try to read those from Facebook. So what joys and concerns do we have that we would want to um, share either on our palms or spoken or made in comments? Lynn, I have a friend in New York who has the coronavirus. She luckily is in the last stages of it. But I would ask for prayer for Mary Sue. So Dana has a friend who um, has the coronavirus, is in the last stages of it, and so prayers for, for Mary Sue. Um... For those who are experiencing a cycle of anxiety, Kelly has written this in, that, you know, do okay, then not do okay, and then do okay. There's a lot of that up and down and spiraling um, that happens with a number of people. So prayers for um, a sense of, of constancy, um, you know, throughout, throughout our days. for May Fifield, member of our church. She's back in the hospital. She went in last night. Uh, she, they thought she was um, 
bleeding internally, but tests have resulted that she isn't doing that. She either just has a bad virus or possibly uh, ate something that she shouldn't have eaten and has made her very sick. Anyway, her son said she'll be in the hospital at least another day, and then they really would like to put her in rehab for about a week to get her strength back. Okay. So our um, member from CUCC, um, um, FCUC, from the United Church of Christ Congregation, Mm -hmm. Mae Fifield, um, who is in the hospital, um, was having some intestinal um, stuff. She's supposed to be there for one more day, and then hopefully we'll be um, being discharged to to rehab. Also on our comments, um, Melissa is asking for prayers for her friend Chris, who just lost her father, um, not because of the virus. And uh, from Dana, prayers for her husband and all grocery workers, as well as medical and fire and police personnel. Um, Kathy Munson, Kathy and, and Dave Munson are asking for prayers of health for um, care workers and fire responders. First. Prayers for our little church in Butte. Um, Liz Lee is asking for prayers for family member Darren, who had a terrible fall and is in a medically induced coma for brain swelling. Uh, prayers for him and his family. Greg, did you see something else? No. Okay. Oh, there's one. Oh, from Becky Lifley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, our friend Becky Lifley um, from Hampton, Iowa, um, says our first COVID-19 virus is here in Hampton. Please pray for him. Good to, good to hear from you, Becky. Prayers of thanksgiving for all the restaurants who have stepped up during this pandemic. Uh, Linda and John Baker, did you have something you wanted to share? Just unmuted. Okay, we're not able to hear you. Uh, From Donna Burkoff, prayers for her neighbor who lost her son to suicide this past week. Um, Kelly is sharing prayers for struggling students everywhere, probably of all ages. And the parents who are trying to be their teachers. Lynn? Yes, this Carol. Is Carol. I would like to ask for prayers our exec one of our executive ministers of the united church of christ karen georgia thompson lost her father a few days ago she and her two siblings went to the cemetery yesterday to bury him all alone so one of our um executives with the united church of christ lost her father a few days a few days ago and uh, because of COVID, he didn't die from COVID but because of COVID Correct. they had to do just a very private uh, family um, burial in um, New York City I might add oh in New York City and, that, and the individual that's the executive is Karen Georgia Thompson um, Linda and John Baker are asking for prayers for Reverend Jack Severns who is in hospice uh, non-COVID related 
And for Dick Koppel, uh, prayers for the teachers who are trying to continue meaningful education for, for their students. And the administrative staff as well that are trying to <coughs> keep, keep on top of all of that. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Gracious and holy God, we bring forth those things that weigh on our hearts. We name them. We offer them to you, knowing that you have heard them before we write them down, before we bring them to voice. We pray, O oh God, for all those around the world who are impacted by this little virus that is wreaking such havoc. For all of those who are separated from families, for those who are um, caring for the sick, for those who are tending to the dying, to those who love and support those who are caring. We pray, O oh God, for an end to come to this time. We pray for those who are making the decisions about how to administer the programs, the needed equipment, the medications, for those who are doing the research. We pray for our family and our friends, for our church around the world. We pray in the name of the one who came into Jerusalem on the back of the donkey and, and who the people recognized as one who brings healing and cried out, Hosanna. And in praying in his name, we also pray with the words that he has taught us. So as we say together, our Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So as a reminder, the other thing that you were invited to bring with you today was... Um, Elements for communion, some bread and some juice. It's kind of a symbolic way of us trusting in the healing presence of Jesus that we have called out to. You might want to put your paper that you have written those things that you want um, healing for, um, either the paper or the palms, down on a tabletop in front of you or a flat surface, and then use that as your surface to place your communion elements um, so that we have... Um, the sacred the elements for the sacred meal together with the sacred requests that we have made um, and i'm i'm inviting greg to come and and join me um, he's been sitting on the other side of the camera and we're going to be doing we're, we're going to be sharing communion to together um, or partaking together so this i just thought that this would be a good time for greg to come in so you might want to just lean in and say hi hi <laughs> Everybody's waving. <clears throat> so usually we gather to get together to celebrate Holy Communion, and although we are not together physically, let us be reminded that the power of the Holy Spirit unites us as followers of Jesus across all places and across all times. So I share with you today these words from the Gospel according to Matthew. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So we have before us the needs for healing, and the elements that have come to mean life anew. And then we do as Jesus did on a night so long ago, and I invite you to do this with me if you would like. We take bread, 
grain from grain, once scattered, now gathered into one, and we seek God's blessing upon it, and we break it. The sharing is done in distance, but with unity of spirit. And so remembering Christ's word to take and eat and remember him, together we eat. And I invite you to take a piece of bread. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And the body of Christ broken for you. Taste the flavors that have come together and look forward to the day that we will share in the sacred meal under the same roof. In the breaking and eating of the bread, we are surrounded by the Holy Spirit. We are one. And we take the cup of the fruit of the vine. We seek God's blessing upon it as we remember God's new covenant in Christ, a covenant of grace and forgiveness. Take the juice and let it become part of your being as the covenant in Christ is renewed within us as individuals and as a community of faith. Take and drink. Christ and the cup of the living life. Please join with me in prayer. Giver of life and love, healer of creation, we give you thanks for feeding all of creation with your goodness and hope. You bring healing where it is needed most. You bring your church together in spirit. You love us deeper than we can imagine. Bless our going forth into this day and this week so that nothing will be able to quiet the praises we have for you. We pray in communion with Christ, our healer. Amen. So my friends, we are indeed together in the unity of Christ and God through the Holy Spirit. So let us go. Let us go forth into this day, celebrating all that has fed us and nurtured us in this time together. Let us go forth into this day, not scattered, but united through the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace.